Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Farrakhan, a product designer working in London. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to ace the design whiteboard challenge in an interview. I'm gonna walk through my top tips to make the whiteboard challenge a lot easier for you to complete. And I'm gonna walk through an example of how to use this framework that I'm gonna show you guys. So be sure to subscribe for future design related videos and let's get started. So what is the Design Whiteboard Challenge? The Design Whiteboard Challenge is a chance for yourself and the interviewer to have a quote unquote casual conversation to solve a high level problem. And this is a chance really for the interviewer to grasp on what you like to work with as a designer and what type of questions you ask, what's your pro product thinking like. It's not about testing how well you know how to use a design tool like Figma or FigJam. And there's no right or wrong answers when it comes to a solution. It's more about grasping about your product thinking, what you like to work with, how well you can solicit feedback. You're meant to be coming up with low fidelity solutions, sketching um, on the whiteboard and it's about changing directions and having a set framework in place so that you can come up with a solution by the end of a time given. This could be 45 minutes, it could be an hour and it's about what, what are you like to work with with those given time constraints as well. So now we know what white ball challenges are about. So here's some of my top tips on how to solve these high level problems. And my number one tip is have a framework in place. So revise a framework that allows you to solve different white ball challenges and you can adapt this to different scenarios. It's not about revising different answers for the white ball challenges. It's about having a framework that allows you to solicit different conversations with the interviewer and to drive you to different places for the white ball challenge. So having a framework in place is gonna help you so much. So whatever question someone throws at you, you'll just go to your framework and start from there and build out with the time that you've been given. It should get you from A to Z easy. And once you've got a framework in place, your confidence will shoot up and you'll be like, throw me any question you want, I've got this. That's what the beauty of having a framework in place does. So my next tip when it comes to white ball challenges is to revise as much as you can to give you that confidence and you can work with the time constraints given. So once you've got your framework in place, just practice that framework and the chances are if you're given a 45 minute interview, you'll probably only have around 35 to actually do the white ball challenge. So you wanna make sure that you can go through your framework in the given time and you know where you should be at a given time so you can speed things up or slow things down and you know what questions to ask. Practice makes everything perfect and it gives you that confidence. So if someone throws something at you, in, in the white ball challenge and you know where roughly how much time you've got left, you know where to be. Um, if a curveball happens, you know, you can get yourself back on track and finish on time. So just practice and it will make the world of difference. So my last tip before diving into a white ball challenge together is to always think of the higher level and bigger picture when it comes to things. So it's easy to want to craft a solution straight away, but spend that time at the start to really think of a bigger picture. For example, if you was meant to redesign a smart lock, first of all, think about what is the purpose of a lock? And you might be like talking about security, how, what does security mean to someone? And really just go really broad and then narrow things down as you go on into the interview. Because it's very easy, like I said, to go straight to trying to craft solutions. But if you really think of a higher level, it's gonna really show the interviewer that you can think of a big bigger picture and that you really can go to different directions with this and it helps you really come up with great solutions near to the end as well. So think of the bigger picture, go high level at the start. 
So let's dive deeper into actually doing a white ball challenge that I'm going to walk you through the framework that I recommend using. And white ball challenges at first can seem to be really daunting, but once you have a framework in place, they're going to be a piece of cake and you're going to be able to ace them. So framework I like to use is basically starting off with the five whys. So understanding the goal of like, why is this important? Why are we rethinking getting a transport ticket here? The tasks that we're gonna look at, who are we gonna be designing this for? When or where are people gonna be using this? And what are we gonna be actually designing? So for five whys, really simple, really easy to remember, but let's dive deeper into why. So we're gonna be looking at rethinking getting a transport ticket. And what I like to do is imagine like the whole challenge is like an onion and you're basically at a high level, you're gonna be peeling back the layers, getting deeper, deeper, deeper. So always start at a high level and engage a conversation with your interview involvement whenever possible when talking through. So the process is that rethink getting a transport ticket, start with what is transport and what is a ticket? So this is like as high of a level you've really got to go. So why is it important that we actually redesigned getting a transport ticket? So by asking the question what transport is and what a ticket does, it helps you answer these questions of why is it important? What problem are we solving here? And what impact could this have on the world? And what other customer needs here and opportunities that you can bring as well as don't ever forget the business needs as well so how will this benefit customers but how will it benefit the business as well as a designer your job's also to balance the business goals it's important that you don't forget this and the interviewer will be giving you some extra marks for obviously considering this so let's start with why so i first of all when i was doing this challenge i talked through what is actually transport um, because why are we solving this problem so let's actually understand what transport is here so really simply transport is just a way to move people around from A to B um, and I was doing this solution for redesigning the transport network in London and a reason you want to be uh, making it easier to get transport tickets is because with a growing population it's more important than ever for people to move around and the transport network is going to be getting used by more people, so you want more efficient ways of buying tickets. So it gives you more freedom. That's a customer needs here of why people use the transport network. But I also talk through what is a ticket as well. So a ticket really just allows you to get entry to a place or location. It does not have to be physical. It could be digital as well. It's literally a thing that gets you access to a place or exit a place as well next up let's talk about the environmental needs the imp for wider impact why it's important to look at redesign getting the ticket and public transport and um, remember that you can always state um, that you want to validate these things as assumptions and it's something you want to look into further but with the time that you have it's okay to assume a lot of stuff so i made an assumption here that um public transport is more environmental environmentally friendly because um, it reduces the amount of congestion of roads and it's easy to get people to move about with public transport reduces emissions so it can really benefit the world if you make it encourage more people to use public transport here next up we look at customer needs so customers uh, want to get a ticket and use public transport they want to get to places more efficiently um, Rethinking the ticket process can reduce the stress of using public transport. Getting a ticket can be quite a stressful process if you're not sure what one to get. There could be like 20, 30 options when using the ticket machine. It makes you more confident as well. Confidence is something really important, you know, as you want to be confident in using the public transport network. Um, as well as we're seeing this growing need of people looking to be more environmentally conscious and aware. So fulfilling, making the public transport network even easier to use, it helps fulfill that need as well. Business opportunities to look at here. So, TFL Transport for London, they own the net, uh, transport network. This could be in New York or in Paris. And um, the business opportunity, if you make it easy to get tickets, 
more people are going to be more confident using the transport network and this can in turn generate more revenue uh, if more people are going to be encouraged to use the transport network that's a great opportunity here it also creates a better brand perception and image so if people have a great experience you know you've got your home net promoter score people can be recommending this to their friends so it'll be like wait the tickets are so easy to get now like i highly recommend using the transport network increases brand loyalty as well some people might have a choice of using a car or getting the train and if you help actually make this opportunity even easier to use using the trains then you have a chance of basically more people being more loyal to using trains and the public transport in london so this is a why um, so i just talked about growing population in london when you get tickets there's no integrated way to use all travel options in london you can travel by tube bus or by boat and there's no integrated way of doing this and this there's a big opportunity here that we can improve so next up that takes to me like just under 10 minutes to really define and talk through the interviewer with um, and I looked at who we can really look at for designing this with. So when it comes to defining the audience, you really want to understand um, some categories of people, the different motivations of using public transport. So the quick things that you can define when it comes to who is your age, who's good, um, like what generation of people going to be looking at. So I looked at millennials, Gen Z and the elderly, the location of where these people live, what jobs they have, if they own cars or not, how they get around. So I made an assumption here and I was talking to the interview, I was like, is it fair enough to say that, for example, Gen Z, um, younger users that use the transport network, they don't really own cars anymore. There's a decrease in need to know how to drive, especially if you live in cities. Um, and as you can see here, it's just about getting across your thinking just like um what do you think like gen z people are looking to use what trends are changing here like um i know like being at full like a lot of car ownership is going down for younger users so um the, the amount of people driving and passing tests has gone down a bit um and why would they use the public transport network they might be looking to go to work and they could be going out for entertainment or leisure or they could just uh, be students uh, that will be using the transport network. And then the transport network, I first will say it could be used by anyone, right? Uh, but then I, you want to basically, like an onion, like it's, you want to peel back and basically get to a smaller solution and narrow down slowly because at, we had this higher level problem, but we want to start looking at different personas. So I looked at the elderly, um, but then I went, in the pandemic, maybe the elderly are looking more to travel solo. So um, looking at a solution for them might not be as desirable. Um, and in London, if you're uh, at a certain age, like um, you can get free travel on the tube. So uh, off peak, you don't have to actually get a ticket, you get a pass. So they might not always be looking to get tickets. Um, and that's another assumption again I made here. So then I, so what the five wires we've looked at why we're going to solve this problem we figured this out we realized that there's an increase in population um, customers are looking to be more environmentally conscious here and there's no integrated way of getting around the city now we're looking at who we're solving this for looked at the business opportunities and now look at um, when and where and uh, why as well so, so so I believe um, like what I've done here is come up with a problem statement of um, like list out, I talked through with the interviewer the problem of for students is that again, this is an assumption I made, but we have to narrow down the time that we've got is that um, I said, let's look at using millennials and Gen Z's, let's look at students. And I said, when it comes to ticketing, um, they, they they rely on using their phones and they don't really carry cash or cards. So getting a ticket can be problematic if you've only got your phone. So what I looked at was this high, how might we statement. 
So this is how you really, really um, start to drill to get your sketches of solution is have this how might we state, like state your problem and then how might we make it easy for students to buy a ticket using just their phone. Um, so again, it, you want to like drill down a, from your why, why is this important, who are doing this for and then select students here, state the problem and then how might we list out some of the customer needs of when and where they're going to be using this um, so when I said is that um, is there like a, the basic flow is that the time that they could be rushing to get a, a train um, they need to instantly get a ticket quickly and they're stressed out like I was stating the emotions here and then then I was like so this is a basic problem that we've got is they need to get a train um, they need to get a ticket basically instantly they're stressed out they've only got their phone so what can we actually design here and again with the assumptions with what you can design like talk through the interviewer um, assume that maybe you have unlimited budget for resource for development resource or hardware resource and they're really looking for your thinking of like um, you don't just have to design mobile apps right um, just because it's a product design job it might be working on apps doesn't mean you have to work on uh, design an app solution in a whiteboard challenge so the what here is, what type of products is it going to be? Physical, digital, is it going to be a smart watch? Is it going to be a smartphone? Is it going to be a smart band? Is it going to be something desktop based, laptop based, virtual reality, voice based? Um, are you going to be using, like, what type of interface is it going to be? VR, augmented reality, audio voice, um, or is it going to be just a simple GUI like graphical user interface? So I came up with five solutions here for this problem. Um, you don't have to come up with five. If you're struggling, like talk to the interviewer, like their job is to help you as well, to move along. And if you only can come up with three, that's fine as well. Um, like I said, like if you're ever stuck on the white wall challenge, talk to the interviewer to help. So if you think you ever missed anything as you move on, be like, oh, do you think this is okay? Like with this, how might we statement? Do you think you're okay with this problem? And they were like, yeah, that looks good to me. Or have you thought about X, Y, Z, you know? Uh, and now that, that gives you more confidence as well as you go on. So let's look at the what here. So some solutions I came up with. A digital solution of using face ID inside tube stations. So this, I mentioned here that they, they just have their phone, but then then I thought about a solution where you don't even need to use your phone, you just have facial recognition inside the tube stations and the barriers basically, you register your face on the ticket machine and you pair your card but you just walk through the barriers and it recognises your face and it automatically bills your online account. So this solution was you just sign up once and you're registered in the transport network and whether you're taking a bus or a tube it recognises your face and it bills you. Then I looked at a physical solution, so um, like I said, you don't have to design apps for everything. Um, I looked at a smart band, a bit like a Whoop band, um, where it basically has a, I said it just has an NFC tag and it ultimately opens the barriers for you and it builds your online account. Then I talked about, wait, this creates a lot of environmental waste, there's over 9 million people in London, like imagine how many bands that you have to produce for this. With a digital solution, it's always important to talk about the scalability and the uh, wider impacts. For example, the security problems, the privacy concerns, who owns all of this um, personal data of your face and um, where all the billing goes. Like, it's also like with a physical talk about environmental impact. Um, also, if you're replacing the um, Ticket machines with just a, to register your face, like the ticket office, will you still need that? Talk about trade unions, like Transport for London is heavily unionized, people probably lose their jobs. Like think about the wider impact. I've made a video on the wider impact of designs, be sure to check that out. But this is where you really uh, separate yourself from other designers. It's like, all right, I've got a solution here, but how well does this scale? What's the environmental concerns? What's the legal concerns? What happens if someone tries to hack this or a bad actor gets 
the hands of this solution. These are really important things to think about. Accessibility, inclusivity of your solution. So I was talking about a digital voice solution where buying a ticket, you just use your voice. Um, eliminates the need to tap on the existing interfaces because there's so many steps to go through. Then I talked about our voice assistants inclusive. There's so many different dialects um, around the country and it might not scale up well and it won't be that inclusive for people with different dialects. The same with like facial technology and um, it's this inherent bias with like facial ID. For example, people with darker tones of skins, like it doesn't usually pick them up as well. People might have like cosmetic surgery, like plastic surgery, it needs to adapt for this stuff as well. So we need to make this digital solution inclusive. And the last thing I looked at was a digital app where you buy tickets on demand. Um, so before you even get to the station, you just buy your ticket, you're already sorted. You don't have to rely on ticket machines, um, but the main weakness of this is that you have to remember to buy the ticket. Doesn't really fulfill that need of just going to the tube and basically um, wanting to use it straight away without planning. However, I did say this is quite a scalable solution because every uh, majority of people have a smartphone as well. So to make a decision of what one to go through, uh, it's a very common matrix that a lot of people use. It's the impact and effort matrix. So you place your ideas here on the, on the matrix, like number them as well. So one, two, three, uh, four. And you basically say what one could have the biggest impact, but the biggest um, efforts required. So I said um, the facial technology one, the impact of this would be humongous because um, as soon as you're registered in the network, you could just take any journey you want. Don't have to ever worry about uh, buying a physical ticket. Um, and basically you don't have to worry about buying the wrong fare anymore. The impact could be massive, but the technological effort of this will be ma um, huge as well because you need to sign everyone up to this network. Um, you need to make the machines, the, the ticket machines to sign people up on this. Like you need to code this as well as having all the stations in the whole of London to use this network. But then I also look to have a smart band solution and the environmental waste for this. The voice solution wasn't that inclusive or scalable. And then the digital app, this should be number four here. I was like, the impact isn't as big and it's not really solving the problem. So I went with number one here due to the sheer amount of uh, scalability and it's pretty good for the environment as well. Um, and then this is where I started to come up with a solution here. So the interviewers, they're not testing you for how good your wireframes look. They don't have to be high fidelity. This is as basic as it gets. So the way it works is I literally went up to the existing ticket machine and network. You register your face on the ticket machine um, and your face gets registered. You only have to do this once. You tap your payment card on there and it says you're good to go. And then you craft your solution um, and try to think of different edge cases as well. So you walk to barrier, it recognizes your face and the barrier opens by itself. Really, really simple and quick. But then if it doesn't recognize your face, you should be able to use your card if um, if it doesn't recognize you or use your Apple Pay or Google Wallet. So it's good to think of a backup here as well. So again, this is a solution I came up with. Again, like I realized like a serious like privacy concerns the interviewer also probably ask questions like, have you ever thought about, could they register um, online at home or why do they have to use just this machine here to register? Um, they the interview my uh, I was like, oh, you might this project originally you thought you had twelve months. If you only had six months, what would what could you actually achieve in those six months? And you could talk about the security and privacy concerns might not be able to be compromised with that time. So you'd have to work with your product managers and developers cross functionally to understand what you can achieve here. Lastly, talk about how you're going to measure success. So this is your solution. All right, cool. We reached a solution here. It's great. The framework worked well here. So last thing to look at is how you're going to measure success. So 
Task completion time. This is a really important thing because the current problem that we listed originally was that how it can be quite stressful to buy a ticket. It takes a long time. You might miss your train. So um, buying a ticket could have taken originally a few minutes, but once you register on this network, it's going to take a few seconds just to open the barrier. You're not buying a ticket uh, anymore, basically. Talk about the net promoter score. So. If you're not familiar with Net Promoter Score, it's basically how likely someone is to recommend this to a friend to use or a family member. Um, so we could be like, uh, yeah, if the NPS score's been going up, people are recommending using the Tube Network. That's a great sign of success. Task success rate: How many people actually register their face and actually use this? Like, will people just be entirely skeptical to give their data over to the transport network? They might be completely against it maybe they might need to reduce the prices for example to get people on board with us so if you use face facial recognition ticketing you get a 10 percent discount um, to get people on board and then we talk about the wider impact privacy who stores the data does this get abused what happens if it's hacked um, it's all going to be built on trust um, the environmental impacts it saves paper encourages less people to use taxis hopefully if it works well and use a tube and also it's really scalable because once you give your uh, facial recognition data over and you're on the network um, I suppose we, one thing you could talk about yeah like you can now start using the buses or tubes or boats like yeah it's great but then one thing you have to take into account is the various skin tones and cosmetic surgery that I mentioned. You have to be inclusive. Facial recognition technology, um, there's a lot of studies out there that show it isn't like um, always the best. And then last thing I talked about was a backlash from unions and the legal perspective of this. Will local legislation allow you to have a whole mass surveillance? Well, I'd say surveillance mass facial recognition like transport network uh, will TFL one person be able to own all of this data will it have to be regulated for, um, as well so that's me going through the uh, framework of basically how to solve a whiteboard challenge hopefully it makes it so much easier for you to solve your whiteboard challenges so to reiterate is first of all, look at your problem, higher level, like an onion. Why is this important? Why are we actually solving this? What problem are we trying to solve? How does it benefit the customers, business opportunities? Who we're gonna be doing this for? Millennials, we chose here. Then we looked at our problem statement of the problem for the students of when they've been using it. We looked at the mini flow. They could be rushing to get a train. They need to instantly get a ticket looked at how might, we, how might we statement and we came up with some potential solutions but we talked about the drawbacks of every single one and the scalability concerns put them on a matrix drew up some quick wireframes here they literally they, they, they don't have to look amazing and then we talked about how we're going to measure the success and again the wider impacts of this um, so that's it that's uh, basically the framework that i've been using and hopefully it can help you out i'm sure you're gonna ace your white ball challenge by just watching videos like this hopefully it increases your knowledge around this i use the tool excali draw to practice it's really simple um i'm sure there's figma templates and fig jam templates you can use to practice as well and be sure to subscribe to my newsletter i'll give some tips on there as well so i'll put the link in the description below for that if you've made it this far into the video i really appreciate it so that is my whiteboard challenge thank you so much for watching this video i just wanted to wish you the best of luck in your whiteboard challenge hopefully this video gave you more confidence in your own whiteboard challenge and you've picked up a few more tips to hopefully nail that job offer. So be sure to give this video a thumbs up, comment down below your favorite tips, and subscribe for more design videos, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.